Hello and welcome to Mad About Superheroes cartoon commentary of the Superpowers episode, The Death of Superman. Now it's pretty much common knowledge that there was a storyline in DC Comics, uh, Superman, uh, that was the death of Superman. Um, pretty big deal at the time, very controversial, uh, made headlines in the news, but, uh, this episode actually, uh, um, was prior to that, about five or six years prior, because, uh, the Death of Superman storyline was in the early 90s, uh, 1990 or 91, or uh, something like that, <clears throat> can't remember the actual date, too lazy to look it up, <laughs> but, uh, I was, uh, very much into collecting comics, uh, then, by then, and, uh, a lot of people have, there's that rivalry, Marvel or DC, um, I've always loved both, <clears throat> I think it's kind of silly, even uh, in like the uh, the live action world in films, there's that rivalry too. A lot of people are kind of digging it that Marvel is crushing DC right now, and I think it's all silly. There's room for both to succeed. But here we have the episode is starting off, and Superman is is already gone. They uh, they got him in this uh, casket, uh, this torpedo looking thing, uh, that the, and they're gonna launch him into uh, into space, into the sun, but. Uh, it reminds me of um, the uh, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, uh, where they jettisoned Spock when he died. Spoilers <laughs> for like a 35, 40-year-old movie. Uh, when they launched him out into space in a similar similar kind of uh, torpedo-looking thing. <clears throat> and it, this is, uh, like I said, this was prior to the Death of Superman comics, and there are some similarities, especially the mourning process here. Um, uh, it's very public, uh, you know... Uh, Everybody loves Superman, and they got the black armbands on there. Um, that's something that they did in the in the comics. There was even a, a, like a poly bag comic that you can get that had the armband in it that you can actually wear. So uh, yeah, there was a lot of gimmicks to sell comics at that time. There was a lot of editions um, that were released. I just bought the newsstand because I didn't. I just wanted to find out what happened. I didn't care about all that extra stuff. Which I was smart to do because now they're, those things aren't those those comics aren't worth the paper they're printed on. You can get them in quarter bins. But uh, yeah, here's what I was talking about where they jettison it, jettison Superman into space in his little casket, his little torpedo thing into the sun. And uh, Firestorm is having some grief. Uh, he feels that it was his fault, which is going to come into play soon in the episode. Feels he's failed, Superman. The other uh, superpowers team members are trying to console him. Uh, uh, Cyborg and Hawkman, Green Lantern, but uh, they're not getting through to him. He's, you know, he's going through his an emotional ordeal. <laughs> so some people, the '90s uh, comic Death of Superman. Uh, some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, I didn't mind it, uh, I, although. You know, Doomsday, again, other characters, some people love him, some people hate him. Super, uh, Doomsday basically is, is or technically, uh, the one that killed Superman, or they killed each other. Um, I thought it was a little little lame that it was a brand new character that they created to kill Superman. It wasn't like, you know, one of his, you know, long enemies like Darkseid or even Lex Luthor or something like that. But, um, so I didn't mind it, but uh, I really liked the aftermath of it. The, um, I like the Reign of the Superman story, where they created those new characters, like the Cyborg Superman, uh, the new Superboy that was like a clone of Superman, who, uh, who like, um, uh, was just hatched from his uh, egg, for lack of a better term, too early, and that's why he was, you know, a boy, not a full-grown man. And uh, Steel uh, was a cool character, who was like an armored, armor-clad Superman. And then they had the Vindicator Superman, who had Kryptonian origins. Um, I like that aspect of the of the storyline, um, and again, some people some people thought the return of Superman was 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 kind of lame, um, but I I like the whole after they they actually kept it going for quite a long time. Maybe it was uh, around a yearish, maybe a little shorter than that. But uh, there was all, there's also been animated versions of that. They did uh, um, there was one that's called it was um, like straight to video or straight to streaming, whatever you whatever you call it now. Um, there was one that was just called The Death of Super Superman, and then there was, uh, more recently, oh no, that one was called Superman Doomsday, excuse me, and then more recently there was The Death of Superman, 
that was a two-parter, and then it was the reign of the Superman, which was the title of the uh, also of the the aftermath that I was just talking about with all the different Superman, which is the reign of Superman. The reign of the Superman is based on a story, a short story that Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster had written um, prior to creating the super, the actual Superman character that we all know and love today. Um, there was a short story that he wrote that that title, The Reign of the Superman, is based on. I hope I made that clear. <laughs> Not sure if I could explain that all too well. Sorry about that. But we're going to get into what actually happened in this episode where uh, Darkseid has captured uh, Firestorm and uh, he wants to get to the bottom of it too. What happened to, what actually happened to Superman? Is it a trick? He thinks they're, they're tricking him. <laughs> so that they'll come out and uh, they can draw him out. You know, he's a very uh, not trusting and suspicious character, you know. Very true to form uh, for Darkseid. So they're using some kind of gizmo on Firestorm to try to get him to reveal the secret of Superman's death. And we all want to know. We're waiting with we're waiting with bated breath, right? <laughs> what could kill what could possibly kill Superman? Especially like I think this this episode is actually based on an old comic book. I, I seem to remember like I, I I'm more of a eighties kid uh, uh, for comic books and, and into the nineties. I did buy some back issues of stuff I liked from the 70s and got trade paperbacks and anything that I can get my hands on uh, uh, for, you know, the characters, uh, for the history of characters that I liked in comic books. But I do recall something similar, um, like this coming up soon where um, uh, uh, Superman um, turns green, he gets infected by kryptonite, and he, t and he turns green. I remember something similar like that from a comic cover or a comic storyline from way, way back before my time. So maybe this wasn't, um, when he died in the 90s in the comics, probably wasn't the first time. Or they, in that uh, instance, um, way back when, like I said, it's similar to this where he had like the green skin. Um, it was probably for just like the one issue. Anybody who knows can comment and, you know, and fill me in on what actually, you know, happened or if I'm remembering that right. So this is it here where he gets, uh, he got blasted by some kind of kryptonite thing and, and he needs Firestorm's help. But uh, Firestorm's got his own problems. He's getting attacked by these uh, uh, tentacle-like gimmicks. So they, they were they were on a mission in space in there, and they visited this planet to survey this planet. And uh, this is what happened. It was just kind of like a, a an accident, a chance kind of uh, of occurrence. So uh, Firestorm couldn't get to uh, Superman fast enough to help him. Not that he, I don't know if he'd be able to have done anything. But this is where uh, his guilt comes in. <laughs> Firestorm's a, a character, a cool character um, uh, that they introduced in, in this cartoon series uh, the season before this. Um, and he was a, a, a big character they were pushing in the 80s in the comic books as well. Um, but more recently on the, uh, the CW uh, DC universe... They had him uh, come out on The Flash, I believe it was, where he first appeared. And then they had him in The Legends of Tomorrow. But it was like the more current version of Firestorm. Where it wasn't Ronald Raymond, it was a different character. His name escapes me. Again, anybody that knows or wants to make comment of it can you know, do so in the comment section. And I've mentioned uh, before to um, love the dark side characters uh, created by jo Jack Kirby. Um, was very happy that they included him in the uh, in the Super Friends cartoon. Like I said, it, it was the season same same season where they introduced Firestorm. Just before this one, they introduced Dark Side and those characters. Um, it would have been even cooler if they had you know thrown Orion into the mix and and New Genesis. But uh, can't rewrite history. We got what we got and. Uh, like I said, love the inclusion of Darkseid. He's a, a great villain for, um, you know, 
the super friends, superpowers. I, I like to call you know, for me, it's the Justice League, <laughs> you know. Don't know why they just didn't call it the Justice League, but super friends may, may be more kid-friendly. <laughs> Now the uh, the uh, superpowers team are visiting Superman's fortress of solitude to get his affairs in order. You know, uh, out of respect for you know his passing, and uh, they've been captured in uh, in some kind of gizmo that luckily uh, Cyborg was able to break them free of. And uh, Wonder Woman just commented, she wonders what other surprises are in store, and big surprise. Superman. <laughs> How could that be? <laughs> Love that image of the uh, as he walked closer, the S gets closer and closer to the screen until the screen goes black. That was nice. Good imagery. And of course, it's not Superman. It's a robot duplicate. <laughs> it's an LMD. <laughs> oh, that's the that's the wrong company. That's Marvel. <laughs> Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, that's Life Model Decoy, which uh, is famously used in uh, in Nick Fury, Agent of Shield comic books. Always love when the when uh, Superman's Fortress of Solitude would show up in the comic books or the cartoons uh, in this series. It's actually something that I always when I'm. I, what I refer to uh, as as my home, <laughs> I call it the Fortress of Solitude. <laughs> I, I'm probably not unique in that respect, but a lot of people probably refer to their man caves or their, you know, um, where they keep all their collectibles and things like that. They somebody else probably must do it, or or Bat Cave would be another popular one. This is my Bat Cave, you know, that kind of thing. So now the robot Superman is explaining that there's a thing that's called a Kryptonian trance where maybe Superman's alive. Maybe if he, if he was able to put himself in this trance uh, in time, that maybe it, and his, uh, just his metabolism, his heartbeat and all that stuff was, was slow to have the appearance of death, but he's not actually dead. <laughs> As if anybody thought that he was really dead, even when they uh, kept it going in the comics for so long, like I said, it was maybe it was six months or a year, whatever it was. Um, maybe somebody thought that he was really dead, <laughs> but I, I personally didn't. I think a lot of a lot of people weren't fooled by it. It was just a matter of when he was coming back and how they were going to do it, what kind of reasoning or you know story they were going to come up for, with it, with for him to come back. I dug what they what they did. You know, um, like I said, uh, your mileage may vary depending on you know who you are, what your taste is. So, uh, Darkseid, uh, has created a ruse in order to get into the Hall of Justice here. Uh, the Super Friends think that it's, uh, Firestorm returning and that he's distraught from, uh, his, um, you know, what happened with Superman, the death of Superman, and they let their shields down to let him in, because if they, they felt that they didn't, he would get hurt. And, uh, of course, it's not really, uh, Firestorm, like I said, it's a ruse from, from Darkseid, and he's got the, uh, the, the jump, the drop on the Super Friends. Now we get the reveal here that it's not actually a firestorm. <laughs> and they call it, in the comics, it's like parademons, but uh, I think they call them power, uh, uh, paradrones in the cartoon series, I guess, because you couldn't say, use the word demon. There's certain things you can and can do due to, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, standard and practice for broadcast television for kids. Uh, for Saturday morning cartoons. So that's probably why they couldn't use the word demon. I'm surprised that they're even able to use the, the title as Death of Superman. But I guess they're not saying it. It's just written. Or I don't know. I, I, do they say Superman's dead? I think they do. And the, the, they refer to him as dead. Or maybe not. Can't remember. Hey, there's lots of all there's all kinds of weird rules and regulations of what you can and can't do, and sometimes it's like certain things slip by, and then other things, you know, they, they don't. Like I was explaining in the last cartoon commentary for um for uh, the episode "The Fear" with Batman that featured his uh, origin, the death of his parents, 
and they had to be very careful what they could and couldn't do. They couldn't show a gun. They couldn't say he has a gun. They couldn't show his parents, you know, bloody on the floor. Uh, but they did it in kind of a clever way where they were able to get them the message across, you know, what had happened. You know, you sometimes it's, uh, you know, uh, the less you show, you know, or you form the, the, the pieces in your head of what you're not seeing. So... So Firestorm managed to uh, escape. Uh, it was kind of a clever way that they, they had him escape where uh, uh, the beams that Darkseid had Firestorm captured with were tuned into uh, uh, Firestorm's like uh, body frequency or however you want to put it. And um, But he's made up of both himself and the Professor to form Firestorm. They're two people in one. So he was able to change back to Ronald Raymond uh, uh, so that way... Um, they wouldn't recognize that, you know, uh, that that particular frequency would be different. Again, don't know if I'm explaining that all that well, but <laughs> doing my best here, guys. That was kind of a clever way of, of you know, him escaping. And of course, uh, Darkseid is going to exploit the death of Superman, the, the most powerful, you know, hero on Earth and of the Super Friends. Um, uh, he's going to exploit that to, you know... Uh, to uh, launch an invasion on Earth, so the Super Friends are working vigilantly to, you know, to, to thwart his pan his plans. Excuse me. I always like the uh, the Firestorm character. Um, like I said, he's he's two in one. He's got the Professor with him, and then he's also uh, Ronald Raymond. That's a cool idea. Of you know two two people forming together to to be the the super character. It's kind of an idea that goes way back to like uh, the old Captain Marvel comics, you know. Uh, or now he's called Shazam for legal reasons. He can't be called Captain Marvel. Um, but uh, yeah, I always like that when two characters, uh, you know, would meld together. It's a cool idea. Or um, they even use it later on with Masters of the Universe with the filmation cartoon where Prince Adam turns into He Man. And they're almost like, uh, you know, separate identities. So now they've recovered Superman uh, from the uh, from the sun, that little torpedo casket they had him in. And uh, they're going to try to revive him, you know, with the information that they got from Superman's uh, robot duplicate in the Fortress of Solitude. And they're using this, uh, this technology, this beam on him. And they're going to keep the audience in suspense if it actually worked or not, right? And they got now Darkseid's invading Earth. Uh, he's making his attack. The first wave anyways. And they're going to show in a little bit how he opens up like Stargates, you know, all around the Earth. Uh, for his armada to, uh, to invade the Earth. This is something that they did too, uh, uh, you know, a version of this, uh, you know, um, on the uh, Superman the Animated Series that came out like in the 90s. It was on for quite a few seasons, really good cartoon series, you know, where they've, um, at that point they had stepped up the storytelling and all that, um, even prior to that with Batman the Animated Series, but um, where uh, a similar thing happened where Darkseid was in uh, some episodes. They kind of set him up and then there was like an invasion thing where he invaded Earth. and But much more in depth and, you know, and uh, more a little more complex than what's, you know, going on here. These episodes are very much one and done. There was no, like, continuation or, or, or you know, two-parters or anything like that. But now we have, of course, who's attacking Darkseid? Who could it possibly be? <laughs> And someone's made short work of that ship, and of course, it's the Man of Steel. <laughs> He's back. The reports of his demise were greatly exaggerated. And I love, always love when Darkseid uses his Omega Beams. <clears throat> Although they're much more powerful, like in the comics, or, or like I just mentioned, the Superman, the animated series. Um where it actually hurts Superman, and, and he wouldn't be able to withstand them that easy like he's doing in this. But, um, you know, the things in the in this era, uh, in the Superpowers uh, cartoons, and even the Super Friends before this, um, 
you know, they, they uh, simpl simplified things a lot, you know. And uh, it was very rare that, you know, the, 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 uh, the good guys could never be overpowered or overmatched by the bad guys. If it was, it was just only for a brief moment in the episode. And then, of course, there's always the, uh, the quick comeback. And they've thwarted Darkseid's invasion plans, and that's pretty much the episode. Always uh, love revisiting episodes of the Superpowers, especially as my favorite season of uh, the Super Friends. Uh, very much in my uh, uh, time in the 80s when I was a kid. Um, were these new episodes, like I'd always watch reruns of the Super Friends, but these were the episodes that were happening, you know, when I was, you know, seeing them in time, like when they were first airing on TV. So, always a lot of fun, and uh, thanks for letting your geek flag fly with Mad About Superheroes, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.